Hello and welcome. I am super excited to make this video for you today. This is a result of hundreds of hours for the team working. We're going to be looking at sales and gross margin analytics today, but this is just the beginning. This is just the tip of the iceberg and just a teaser for what's to come. We're looking at sales first, but you're going to see similar videos for HR, category management, supply chain analytics, insurance, safety, digital marketing, and the list goes on and on. But today it's sales analytics, and specifically we'll take a look at gross margin, superpower, super calc. So we're gonna be talking about price, volume, cost, mix analysis. Now, before I jump in, the link to this dashboard will be available in the description of the video. So you're welcome to go there, take a look at the description, get to the dashboard, play with it, and get a good feel for the usefulness of this calculation. So let me set the stage first. This is what's gonna happen after your strategy for sales quarter planning and quarter attainment process have been established and you've already put that in action and then a year is at the tail's end of it and you're trying to understand how well did your strategies work. So let's take a look and see what we got going on. So I call this a sales dashboard. Why do I call it a dashboard and not the report? Because the idea of a dashboard is to quickly understand where things are working, where things are not working, and where I should be taking action. So in the top left, we have our six major KPI. We have our sales, margin, average selling price, units, margin percent, and unit margin. For all of these KPIs, we also have additional information that helps us put things in perspective and come up with additional context. So for sales, for example, when I look at this number, I'm trying to understand, comparing to last year, am I up or am I down? And what we do is we have a green color for everything that's favorable with respect to year over year analysis. And I think everything in red is anything that's unfavorable. So here I see that my sales are up 25%, that's awesome. My margin is up, it's 16%, that's awesome. My price is up, used to be buck 64, now it's almost $2. My units are up by 5%, that's good. So the growth of units is slower than that of sales. That implies that we're enjoying some sort of price advantage. However, our overall margin seems to be taking a bit of a hit. We went from 27% down to 25, and our margin per unit, so how much money we're making on each sale. And in this case, we're looking at raw material and some other costs when we come up with this margin. We see that our margin went up by 4 cents from 0.45 to 0.49. So even if we look at these four metrics, we right away, they're already organized in such a way that that helps me put things in perspective and gives me context for what's good and what's not so good. But so far at high level, the only thing that seems to be the problem for business overall is my overall margin profitability, albeit my margin did go up quite a bit. Now let's take a look at the lenses that we use to analyze what happened. So in our case, we the first one is our category. That's a drillable chart where I could drill down all the way to individual products. And then looking at my different product categories, we see that only one category, biodegradable kitchen essentials, enjoyed a revenue growth and the margin improvement. So both the revenue 72 million and the margin 24% are in green, which means that they have improved overall relative to last year. All of my other categories, revenue did grow. However, the margin seemed to have shrunk because we see that the margin is now mostly in red. I will quickly run through the rest of the lenses. So we have our business unit lens. So we have five business units and we see that only one of them as well grew in terms of the revenue and profitability. Everywhere else we enjoyed mostly positive sales growth. And then in one business unit, luckily the, the smallest one, we, enjoy we did not enjoy any growth because our revenue and profitability suffered. In addition, we we're able to take a look at our top five brands. It's a dynamic list and we can interact with it as we change our selections for categories and business units. And we also have a small chart here that indicates the sales trend 
What's important here is just to see the change of colors. We see that most of the year colors are green, so the growth was positive. And then the last month in December, uh, relative to last year, we sold less. And finally, you will have a team, sales team performance. So here we have a bunch of different teams. We could drill into individual teams, take a look at who are the members of the team, see what happened with their sales, margin, uh, change in margin, and uh, both relatives and absolute terms. Now, if you have seen sales dashboards, you have not seen anything super interesting and super new, right? So there is maybe something that's cool in terms of helping you understand and pick the areas to explore. So this dashboard, I would argue, makes it easier for you to find opportunities to zero in and to understand who you need to pick up phone and talk to if something's underperforming. But you probably have seen a bunch of similar trend charts and bar charts before. What you probably have not seen is this little tiny devil in the middle of the dashboard, because this is how we're gonna breaking down the difference in margin across the main components of the margin walk. So the components are the following. We have price, unit cost, volume, mix, discontinued products, new products, and then the overall impact. Now we will be extending this dashboard and offering training labs, accelerators, to add additional components such as inflation, currency impact, and other things. But for now, I think this is already a pretty powerful insight generator to understand what's happening with my pro profitability for my business. So let's see the kind of insights that this chart and this calculation allows us to get. So overall, let's click on the category that did really well. And let's understand why this category is doing so well. Well, we see that the first part of it was price. The biggest positive bar that adds to the bottom line is the price. So generally speaking, for all of the products that roll up in generally, our, pr our pricing strategy was successful because we were able to raise the price quite a bit and that did not punish us with poor volume to yield a positive result. So we have 12 million out of our variance, uh, margin variance that came from price. However, we also see that unit cost went up quite a bit as well. Luckily, it didn't go up quite as much as our pricing. So pricing more than offset the changes in unit costs, raw materials and so forth. However, we did, we do see that our volume did drop. It dropped by almost million dollars, but we did something super smart here. We're able to sell more products with higher unit margin. And that really helped us out. So even though we sell fewer units overall, the ones that we do sell are a lot more profitable. So we're enjoying a healthy $4 million bump. And then a couple other things happen. We discontinued a bunch of products worth of about a million dollars, but we're able to switch our customers to new products, maybe new versions of those products. So these things kind of uh, cancel each other out. In some other versions of this chart, although I bet you you're not going to find too many examples of this chart in the real world, but some businesses choose to bundle discontinued new products into the volume bucket. I think you're going to get a little bit more insight when you break it down into volume of existing products, the same products that were available last year in this year, and then also the impact of products discontinued and added to your portfolio. Now, the question is, is there a watermelon effect that's happening in this category? Let's drill into subcategories and see if there is something interesting going on there and if everything is just as rosy as the category itself. Let's just take a look at the very first subcategory, which is our biodegradable essential bamboo utensils and cutlery. If I click on this, I see that this is not doing quite as well as the category overall. So we did bump up the price. However, the margin, the unit cost grew out, outpaced our pricing strategy. So we're losing something right away. We also are losing quite a bit on volume. However, our mix is is matching whatever we're losing on volume. So whatever our strategy was with pricing probably would have worked had we not gotten stuck with the negative impact of probably raw materials. And we can also take a look at our team. Uh, in our case, this is just one salesperson and we kind of see what's happening there. Maybe we'll find some more interesting scenarios later. Now I'm drilling down even more. Now I'm at the individual product level so, and what's amazing about our calculation, our calculation will fit perfectly. Whether you're looking at product hierarchies, customer hierarchies, geography hierarchies, you can make them as many levels as you would like. 
everything will foot perfectly, all of the variances will foot perfectly, and the math will just work. And I will take this moment to celebrate this because this took me years to figure out. If you look at our channel, if you look at our blog, we've been tackling this for a very long time. We got it to work for a revenue analysis eventually, although the first at best were not as successful. The first versions of the calculations were easy to implement. However, they did not roll up and did not sum up properly across different hierarchies. So it took a bunch of thinking through and a lot of math and calculation proc cycles to get it to work. However, when we try to do this for the margin, it became even harder. So finally celebrating this, we were able to do this perfectly. Math just works, everything foots perfectly. And I'm pretty proud of, of the team that we're able to get it to this point. And I think you guys will be super excited when you're taking the same, you know, this approaches, this logic, this IP and applying it to your, to your scenarios. So we will have a super deep video on the math, on the logic, on what comes into making this work on how this influences your pricing and sales strategy and quota strategies, quota attainment processes. So more of these videos to come. This is more of a teaser of what's possible and what we've been working on. And hopefully soon all of this will be available on our website. So what is coming? Let's take a look here. So we will have another video and a bunch of labs, accelerators, a lot of IP focused on sales strategy formulation analysis. This is where we'll be looking at market share, where we'll be looking at profitability, where we're going to be looking at individual salesperson, looking at their customer and product mix, and trying to figure out what is the right quota, what are the right objectives for each salesperson giving to distribution of customers and products, and the overall sales trajectory that they have. Then we're going to be talking about PVM work for revenue. That's the good way to get into the math. Then we're going to kick it up a notch talking about PVM price, volume, cost mix analysis. We're going to be talking about constant currency analysis, exchange rate impact, pricing analytics, where we're going to be figuring out what, what needs to be, what needs to happen with the price, giving the fluctuations of raw materials, what's happening with inflation, exchange rates. So that assumes us working in multiple currencies and multiple markets having plants in different markets, sourcing materials from different markets, so we can make it super complicated. Again, we're talking about quarter planning and attainment with the right back, very sophisticated process, and then doing a sales planning, budgeting, and forecasting process as well. So this is just a glimpse of what's coming. We're gonna have, we're aiming to have the deepest and the richest and most useful set of IP. And when I talk about IP, I'm talking about labs, free training, workshops, and also accelerators where we're going to be able to drop our IP in your environment. It's going to be fully fabric friendly and allow you to stand up these solutions in days as opposed to having to spend hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to get just basic trends from your consulting companies. And that's about it for today. Again, this is just a teaser, just a taster of what's to come. So I'm looking forward to making more cool videos for you and see you back very soon.